Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? Oftentimes, the preamp you use can have a dramatic impact on the sound quality of vinyl records. So what I want to know is, are any of the affordable preamp options any good? A lot of entry-level turntables include built-in phono preamps to give you a standard line-level output to hook up to your stereo. But higher-end and vintage turntables usually require you to provide your own preamp. Decades ago, you'd simply connect your turntable up to the phono input on your receiver. But these days, very few new receivers have preamps built in. And for that matter, fewer and fewer people are even using receivers. Most are simply going with powered speakers. So, for many, a standalone preamp is necessary. In audiophile circles, spending hundreds or even thousands of dollars on a turntable preamp is nothing new. I know I can't justify that kind of cost, and there's a good chance you can't either. So, I'm curious about the performance of some of the more affordable options. First up is the Music Hall Mini. It's a pretty simple little unit. No controls, just plug it into your turntable and it produces a line level output. This is an entirely solid state option and it seems pretty typical of the kind of budget, mainstream preamp many people would buy. Now, to make things interesting, I also bought an inexpensive tube preamp off of AliExpress called the Little Bear T7. It's fairly compact, it includes a 12 volt AC power adapter and has a mini jack aux input on the front. It came with a pair of Chinese made 6J1 tubes which are illuminated by orange LEDs when the unit is turned on. I took the T7 apart out of curiosity and it confirmed my suspicions. There's a JRC2068 dual channel op amp in here which does the actual work of amplifying the phono signal. That means the tubes simply act as buffers for the sole purpose of just giving the audio that tube kind of sound. They're not actually amplifying the signal like an all tube preamp would. That's also how they can have an aux input on the front so you can get that sound from any other kind of line level source. Otherwise, the build quality is actually pretty decent. The unit seems to have been put together reasonably well. As the final option to explore, I pulled out what I used to use years ago, my Sony STR-D311 stereo receiver. It dates back to about 1993, and it was an admittedly lower-end model in Sony's lineup. But it always served me well, and I want to know how it stacks up against the others. I picked these specific devices so as to have examples from each category one might look at a brand new name brand solid state preamp like the Music Hall Mini, a quasi tube based but questionable quality unit like the Little Bear, and a solid state vintage option like the receiver. Now, yeah, there are plenty of other preamps in these same categories that I could have gone with, but these are the ones I picked. And with such a small sample size, I'm not gonna make generalizations anyway. So let's get to it. What do they sound like? Of course, this can't be an example of their absolute sound quality being in a YouTube video and all, but I do think you'll find the differences pretty easy to pick out. The setup I used is a Fluence RT84 turntable with Ortofone 2M red cartridge, and I cleaned the records before every test. Each preamp was recorded directly into a high-end field recorder, so make sure you're using good headphones or speakers. I have three audio samples from artists who very graciously allowed me to use them. And if you like what you hear, I have, of course, included links in the description.
starts to fade My weakness is all the shame I found the Music Hall Mini to be fairly transparent with a good sense of stereo separation. The bass is solid, but doesn't have much character to it. It seems kind of sterile. And while the highs are clear, they get a bit sibilant at times. The receiver also sounds clear and open, but to me adds a bit of warmth. It doesn't lose any detail in the process though, and the low end seems a bit fuller. It also has a noticeably clean noise floor. The surface noise of the record is definitely louder. And even that still sounds natural. There's a bit of sibilance here too, but really not too bad. Now, the Little Bear. Yeah, it sounds way different. Almost like the EQ got flipped in the opposite direction. There's a much stronger mid-range and the stereo separation feels a bit narrower. The biggest change is the high end. It frankly sounds like it's been rolled off. Personally, I wouldn't want to listen to this one for very long. And as such, the Little Bear is really more a novelty. Since it's just using the tubes as buffers, you're really relying on the solid state circuitry underneath to amplify and properly EQ the phono signal. And unfortunately, that's where this unit seems to be hit or miss. I found a thread online where a bunch of people bought these and had very mixed results. Some had the same rolled off treble like I did, yet others said their units sounded fantastic. Seemingly even the manufacturer is aware of this, as I found reference in the user manual to bad audio being caused by a defective op amp. It says they'd send you a replacement board if you experienced the problem, or that, you know, you could just fix it yourself. First time I've ever seen that in an instruction manual. but. In any event, for about $60 US shipped, it's really just a gamble, and it's a shame that I lost on this one. As for the Music Hall Mini, during the audio test you may have noticed some low-level hum. Here's an example of it. I initially couldn't figure out why it was doing that. I had it hooked up the same way as the other preamps, and yes, I confirmed that the ground cable was connected between it and the turntable. So I took it apart to see if something was wrong. And it turns out, well, the whole thing is just wrong. This looks really quickly and cheaply put together. Some of the parts aren't very high quality, like the Jackcon capacitors. And I think I figured out the deal with the hum. The ground lug on the back is connected to just the metal housing. The circuit board is held in with one screw in the middle, and there's very little exposed trace around the hole to tie the chassis to the board's ground plane. So even though I had a ground cable connected to the lug, I just don't think it was doing much. Now, this was perplexing to see in a device from Music Hall, which generally has a reputation for making solid audio products. But then I got my answer from another part of the circuit board. Yeah, this is just a rebadged Rolls VP29 preamp, which is known to be an okay, albeit budget model. And to add insult to injury, while the Music Hall Mini sells for $100, the VP29 is just 50 bucks. And that's really frustrating. Not just that it's a poor quality product that's already overpriced as the Rolls VP29, but that people pay twice as much for it with the Music Hall name. Yeah, I could fix the ground issue and probably swap some components to improve the sound quality, but for a hundred bucks? Nobody should have to do that. 
It's rare that I completely dunk on a product in a video, but honestly, just don't buy this. Thankfully, there is one compelling option amongst those I tested, and it's honestly the one I least expected. Yeah, the receiver, to me at least, sounded the best, and I'm a bit surprised by that. It wasn't very expensive when it was new, and it came towards the tail end of vinyl's popularity, so I figured it would sound fairly mediocre. But it's not, and I think that goes to illustrate why some people are still enamored with vintage gear. Sometimes even low-end stuff performed well. And between all the options we looked at here, this one's actually the least expensive. I found some D311s that sold on eBay for about $35 shipped, and other receivers from this time period frequently show up in thrift stores and flea markets. It was really just bad luck that I ended up with two out of the three preamps I tested turning out to be, uh, problematic. Of course, there are plenty of other options out there at a wide variety of price points, and I'd imagine the vast majority of them work great. This was meant to just be a fun look at a few of them. But if you're getting into vinyl and need a preamp for your turntable, don't overlook using a vintage receiver. The quality can be better than you might realize, which is made all the more compelling since you can often pick one up for a song. If you like the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.